So, Da Vinci talked about um, looking for the connections, looking for how everything fits into place. I don't remember his exact, uh, I don't remember his exact comment. Um, when you see how everything comes together, then truly you're seeing, or something like this. And yesterday, this dude posted this thing about, oh my god, I'm so smart, everyone else isn't smart, like, I'm cursed with intelligence, like, oh my god, what is wrong with the world, because I am so forlorn, everything's wrong, I'm always stuck by myself being so smart. And I tried, I tried really hard not to, you know, troll him. Um... I did try to explain to him that, hey, you're not special, bitch, like, you know. One of the things he came back with to me was, do you even ponder, like, you know, existence? Do you ponder this? Do you ponder that? And I'm like, obviously you're not that intelligent, because if you were intelligent, you would actually go and look at the profile of the person who's talking to you if you're that confused as to who's talking to you. If you're not paying attention, which apparently you're not, because you would have seen my videos and you would have seen other things that I've done and posted, which means you're no longer following me, which proves that you're too lazy to get up and go and look at someone else's profile. Rule number one of intellectual conversation when you're talking about getting deep check out who your opponent is. And so I just was like, I put up a Krishnamurti comment and what have you, and, you know, it was funny. But here's the point of the story. This dude, and we're all guilty of exactly what he's doing, this dude is so focused on the pity trip that he's not seeing the miracles. And this is what, like, um, what's her name? Uh, Course in Miracles woman. Uh, I can't even remember. I've got, I've literally got recovery brain. Like some of the synapses in my brain are no longer functioning because there's no alcohol to replace the normal function. So the normal function is trying to come back. And so these videos are kind of part of my recovery process of, you know, getting more truly into myself um, and sharing myself with the world more than anything else. Anyways, um... Oh, shit, I just had her name. Uh, Marion Williamson. That's what it takes to get my brain to, like, snap is a minute and a half conversation. Anyway, so Marion Williamson, all these people, they talk about this. And they talk about, you know, uh, you know, looking for the miracle, not looking for the disappointment. And that's literally what this guy does, is he seeks out disappointment. He thinks he's in that trap, that sh trap of shadow. Not ego, because I don't like that word. He's in the shadow trap, the shadow trap of... Pity, 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 poor me, I'm so this, I'm so that, blah, 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 nobody could possibly understand me, wah, wah, fucking, here's the chip on my shoulder, it's the size of the Grand Canyon. No, bitch, it's not, okay? There is no chip on your shoulder, you just ain't seeing this shit properly, because you're so stuck in your own problems, that instead of looking for the connections in the world, you look at everything that disconnects you from everyone else. Again, most of us are guilty of this. And most of us don't need to brag about whether we're smart or not because most of us do this because we're trained to. So, here's what we're trained to do. We're trained to look for negatives. It's like there, there's that other saying, like, people will not remember the good for you did for them. They'll remember the last emotional response you gave them. So if you've hurt them, they're going to remember you hurt them and that's it. If you want to stop being separated from people if you want to stop being upset that you know you feel like you're alone which is what i've been working on see last video loneliness let's go you need to look for the co correlations you need to look for the connections you need to be able to say to yourself okay i'm focusing here but i'm missing all of this and i'm not saying you just look for the positive because that's bullshit looking only for the positive is just as bad as looking only for what's not working okay you need to look for everything. You need, oh, Jesus Christ. You need balance, right? Here's your balance, scales, whatever. I was doing this because, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it was, Bob. You need to look for these things. You need to be able to find the balance. So you need to look at, okay, why isn't this working? What am I doing to attract this? This is working. Why am I not focusing on that being what's working? Because then I can work on why this f showed up. Because as the book of the law says in chapter 2, uh, verse 9, uh, the sorrows are but shadows. They pass and are done. All life is bliss. Problem is we don't see life as bliss. We see life as suffering because at some point we decided that Buddhism and Judaism was true. 
because we took the, the, the fables and we made them into reality. So then we transformed these archetypes in our brain to facts. And now we're just stuck in what we're talking about right now. So one of the things that kind of changed my perspective of this was when I had this dream where um, in the middle of all of my stress, I had this dream. And in this dream, these I think there were three entities. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I think there were three. But they said Hashem is always working. And Hashem refers to the word. The word is basically God, right? Like if you look at um, a formula, I guess, is, is yod heh vav -Hey, or Yeshua, or actually not Yeshua, because that, that involves uh, Shin, Jehovah. Now, literally, the, the first translation of yod heh vav -Hey, it's four letters. These four letters all correspond to the elements. So you're looking at, uh, you know, earth, fire, uh, earth, fire, air, and water. Okay, so basically there is an underlying energy that is always moving through us. And as long as we're trying to tap that energy, that energy is working with us, not against us. Therefore, technically to speak, there is always something that's helping us move forward. Because technically, unless you're, you know, dead, your life is always evolving. So there's always something under there. And that's what I've been trying to get back to is getting back to that original current. My truth, its truth, our truth, the singular truth. Now, <laughs> again, that's going to work only for me. Because my truth and its truth are going to be a different truth than someone else's. But they will have similarities when you get there. So, now, I'm like, okay, something's working with me. This actually helps my mental faculty grow. Because now I'm like, okay, if something's working with me, then I'm going to work with it. And I'm going to start seeing what is working for me. And I'm going to focus on what matters. And I'm going to stop sweating the small stuff. See how many cliches we can build in this so when you're out there and you're like pissed off or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling upset or you're feeling whatever, recognize right in that moment, you're looking for disconnection. You're looking for a reason to feel that way. If you're a psychic and you're in the middle of like doing something and you feel like someone's attacking you or you're feeling some sort of negative, you're disconnecting because truthfully, if you're, if you're in, if you're on, nothing's going to fuck with you because if your vibration is so high that you're focusing on your truth, and again, not positive, not negative, because none of that matters when you're in the flow. When you're flowing, all of that shit doesn't matter. It doesn't. It it's inconsequential because even if someone is sending you bad juju, it's inconsequential if you're in the flow. So why would you consider care whether someone is or is not? That's disconnection. That's insecurity. That's a whole bunch of other things. But anyways, because I've heard lots of psychics be like, "Oh, this person's throwing some juju at me." Fuck, who cares? You know, like, I had a lady throw juju at me at her birthday party because she didn't like me being there because the guy that took me to her birthday party was like, oh, I didn't read the invite, that it was invite only, sorry. Right? It didn't bother me. I just thought the woman was fucking crazy. That's how you deal with bad juju. As if you actually know the source of the bad juju, you look at the bad juju and you go, hey, bitch, you crazy because you're sending out bad juju. That shit is not to be fucked with. You trifle and you ratchet and you don't know your shit. So you got to go. And then you don't have no juju because you're back in the flow. You see what I'm saying? You see how easy that is? So anyways, you in the flow. Don't look for the disconnection. Look for fucking what's working. Even if what you think is not working, is working because the problem with reality and the problem with our consciousness is technically when you're creating negatives, you're creating positives because you're trying to figure out from this what brought me here, what made this, how did this happen, where is the connection. So you're trying to sort out and rationalize that moment and then you move on to a positive because then you're like, oh yeah, I get it now, blah, blah, blah. I don't want that shit to happen no more, so this is what I'm going to do to make it better, right? alcohol, uh, codependency on like marijuana, shit like this. These are the things that create the disconnections. If you do not focus on, if you were like, if you were clean and sober, okay, like I'm trying to be, and I'm not trying to preach, but just hear me out. If you're clear, right. And you don't have any stimulants or extras in your body, say, except maybe caffeine. Um, then, you know, your clarity for choosing one direction or another is a lot stronger. The problem with things like alcohol is alcohol becomes a depressant. It becomes a uh, creates anxiety depending on how much you work, drink and how fast your body uh, metabolizes and what's going on in your brain. These are the reasons that like when you're watching Hollywood, Hollywood is all about having the drink, right? Mad Men, the entire series, they were fucking drinking all day long. And what were they drinking? They weren't just drinking beer. They were drinking scotch, 
bourbon, whiskey, like hard liquor all day. So by the time they get home, they're pretty much three sheets to the wind. And that's the message that we're seeing in, in with regards to alcohol. Um, and that's not sort of a good thing. And I've been aware of that for years. So, but I'm just saying like what you're putting into your body, what you're doing, these are all things as to where you're at with things. If you're not at a gym, if you're not even giving yourself the option to walk for 20 minutes, again, you're not helping yourself. You're not focusing on, you're focusing on disconnection, not connection. And the simplest thing is literally go out for a walk and then just pr practice one thing. Like which way do you feel like turning? And just do this walk for a while because you will literally break the matrix. And I'll talk about breaking the matrix in one second. And you will start to break the matrix and you will start to realize that all these patterns are interconnected, which goes all the way back to 11 minutes ago when I talked about Da Vinci, seeing everything as one. As long as you start to focus on that, it doesn't matter what comes at you because now you start to see how it all relates. You see the good for the bad, the bad for the good, and none of it has any emotional value except that it's just happening in your life. And it is. End of story. Now, one last thing as I'm leaving. Uh, yesterday, I was walking to the store because I had to get dinner and groceries and all that shit and literally started watching The Matrix break. And what, what this means is that certain things, uh, Robert Anton Wilson talked about breaking The Matrix. He talked about certain exercises to focus on, like uh, one of his exercises was actually getting a Bhagavad Gita uh, from someone, but making four of them manifest in your life. And then, you know, the fourth one, you actually know, hey, this is me creating my reality. That's really what he was trying to do, is show you that you create your own reality. Point of story is, as I'm getting back into the flow and as the sobriety is kicking in and as things are getting better, um, well, they're not better. I mean, I still have a lot of shit to deal with, but that's what the next year is all about. Anyways, as this is getting, as things are changing, I guess I should say. So I go out and I literally see the exact same car side by side. And I'm like, okay. And they're brand new models. So it's kind of weird that two exactly the same brand new models are traveling side by side. And not only are they brand new models side by side, but they're exactly the same fucking color. Then all I see is like 15 cars, literally 15 other vehicles all drive through. And all but like, well, 12 out of 15, let's put it this way, 12 out of 15 are a different color than the other ones. So 12 cars, all the same color, running at the same time. You know, you can be like, Jason, that's common, blah, blah, blah. Technically, no. I've never seen in the short span of driving 15 cars, 12 of which are the same color, two of which are identical models, and yeah, no. Because it was only until the back part where the colors changed on the cars, and all of a sudden, so you have this big blurb of one color, and then you have three different colored cars, and then you have a blurb of the same color as the first cars. That to me was breaking the matrix, and I was like, holy shit. And I ser seriously started laughing. I was like, wow, here it is. Finally, eight years of Reiki, eight years of whatever, and it actually took getting sober and making the effort to go sober that's realigning me with me, my purpose, and all of the rest of it. And like I said, it's, you know, I have so much to deal with in terms of gender dysphoria, um, depression, all the rest of these things to work through as I'm working. But that's why I make these videos, because if I make these videos, it will help people, I hope, to kind of understand that we're not alone. And that if you think you're super intelligent, well, great, you're super intelligent. What the fuck? Who cares? But... If you're super intelligent, then look at how to think and look at how to, you know, process your thinking. Because if you're super intelligent and you're like, oh, I'm alone and pity me, pity me. That's not super intelligence, bitch. That's just a fucking pity party. And, uh, you know, it's your party. You can cry if you want to. But, you know, for the rest of us, maybe save your bullshit so that you just do that in your diary instead of all over Facebook. You fucking like, really? <laughs> do you even think about existing?